open your ears, and lube up your butthole. It's time for the What Do We Call It podcast. Now, here's your host, it's J-Man. Welcome to the What Do We Call It podcast. I'm J-Man, and joining me today is... Neil. And where did you recently get back from vacation? Las Vegas. And what happened the day after you left Las Vegas? Oh, a bunch of people got shot. The worst mass shooting in American history. Yep. Okay. So you go to Vegas roughly two or three times a year. Yep. Sometimes for work, sometimes for vacation. It varies because they do these conferences that you have to go to for your job. Yeah. So you go there and obviously, I mean, it's a mixed bag because you work, but you also get to play some, but it's not like on vacation when you can just fuck off the whole time. Yeah. Like two days are basically work days and then we just stay the whole week. Have you ever not felt safe in Vegas? No. I mean, you can go to shady areas because if you go off, I mean, up when you go to downtown up by Fremont, mm-hmm. I mean, if you wander off at night, I mean, you, it doesn't take that far to get to some shady areas. But as long as you're staying in the well-lit main areas, I mean, you see cops all the time walking, just and it's everything's so lit up. Well, yeah, Vegas Metro, there's like a bajillion of those fuckers. Yeah. And then you see them on the bikes on the on the main strip and i mean you seem to so there's a lot of walking cops on fremont especially yeah because they can't bring the cars up there because they gotta they gotta stop the trannies from selling blowjobs well or they just make sure that they're getting a discount hi all right let's keep it fair here you owe him he gave you the money up front that's the deal come on let's not be a bitch okay so i was at work monday morning and i heard about this shit going down And we were supposed to record last Sunday, but there was some reason that you couldn't. And I couldn't remember if it was because there was like a holdover where you're going to stay in Vegas another night or what the fuck. So I'm sitting here texting you like, hey, uh, hope you got home. All right. Are you, are you still in Vegas? And later on you're like, yeah, I'm fine. Why? And I'm like, ah, did you not hear what happened? No. Turn on the news. Yeah. And by that time it was like super early on. As far as what they knew, how many injured and dead and all that. I think it was like eight thirty, nine o'clock or something. Yeah. You were just getting to work. I figured you would have gotten up and got my text earlier. But yeah, just, just the chance to say, turn on the news. And somehow you had just come from the very place where this shit had come, uh, gone down. And yet you had no idea because you were sleeping while it happened, which a lot of us were sleeping while it happened. I just happened to be at yeah. work that night. Well, it's just two hour. I mean, you figure two hour time difference. So it's, you know, if a concert's going till midnight there, it's, you know, super, super late. 2 a.m. here. Here, so. And I don't know precisely, I didn't memorize what time this guy started shooting, but uh, 64-year-old eccentric millionaire, I'm going to call him eccentric now, Stephen Paddock, was on the 32nd floor of the Mandalay Bay Hotel facing down at a big uh, area where there was a concert going on, and he started just rapid-firing bullets in there, and they said he had, like, almost two dozen rifles with him there yeah and he was using an illegal bump stock so he could turn his semi-auto rifles into full auto which not even getting to the ban semi-automatic rifles debate just the fact that he could modify a weapon so easily to rapid fire and as i'm sitting there at work i kind of saw this and it didn't dawn on me for hours that you had just left but Uh. I'm, i'm looking and i'm like oh shit there was a shooting in vegas at that time it said two dead 24 injured ah that was at approximately 3 a.m by the tail end of my shift it had jumped to 14 dead and 50 injured and then i got home and it was 20 some dead and god knows how many injured and by the end of the day it was 58 dead and 500 plus injured so you're talking about all these people, and I don't know how many hospitals are in Las Vegas. I'm guessing there's at least two. Yeah, I'm not sure. By the sheer volume of people that are around. Yeah. And one's going to be on the outskirts of town. I'm, it's not like I did research for this. We just fired this topic off from the hip 30 seconds before we started recording. But you got to think about any time there's a tragedy like that, just like with 9-11, people are going to all these different hospitals, and it's almost impossible to get accurate numbers about who's dead and who's injured because they're coming in. And you're not going to be like, hey, news, we got more injured showing up. Well, the injured number two is kind of like, you know, if that's happening, I'm getting the fuck out of Dodge. And if I feel like, you know, I could have, and when the adrenaline's going like that, you don't know. I mean, if some, especially if you just get like barely zinged. Hit, yeah. yeah. 
you just don't really know until all of a sudden it's like, holy shit, later when I calm down, I, my fucking, you know, my arm really hurts or my leg really hurts. So that kind of stuff doesn't get reported accurately right away. Yeah, with the adrenaline going and the blunting from all the sounds of the shots. And they talk about when I was in cop school, like if you get into a firefight, a lot of cops will have to debrief afterwards. They won't even be aware of how many shots they fired. Yeah. Because they start shooting and then their ears start ringing and just adrenaline's pumping and you don't know what's going on. And then you're like, oh shit, I got shot. Or oh shit, I got stabbed in the scuffle. Yeah. So yeah, it's totally understandable. So you were staying, you said, right by there. Yeah, we are pretty much staying in that right on that same block. And uh, I'm like, when we were driving by, because we rented a car this time, mm-hmm. and we saw the area that it was, because we go to concerts in Vegas all the time, and we saw the area that it was set up, and it was like, oh, what's going on there? And and I, well, I'm she's not super into country, and I'm I'm obviously not into country at all. Right. So that was never like a reason to go there. But it's uh Was it a multiple day festival? I don't know. I just saw, we just saw the lot where it was all set up at. And wonder, you know, looking online to see what's going on. And we've gone to tons of concerts together. And we've been to places where they just go, oh, do you have your ID? To places where they wand you, pat search you, and then have you walk through a metal detector. Like, as far as security goes. If that. Well, First Avenue has the most security. With metal detectors and stuff? They will wand you, they will pat search you like a quick frisk, and then you'll walk over a metal detector. Because I remember... I think a lot of the places we went to, like Roy Wilkins and then the Quest that used to be open, uh, they never, I mean, they never even pat you down, I don't remember. I know that they didn't have metal detectors, because I just recently went to a concert, uh, I think it was in the spring, yeah, we saw Flogging Molly in Las Vegas, Yeah, and it was on top of the Cosmopolitan Hotel, but they had like like good-ass security, and but then again, it's like, well, some dude's in his fucking hotel room whole lot of, you know, that doesn't do shit. Well, because there's so much outdoor stuff going on, concerts yeah. and shows, and the weather's off the hook all the time, especially at night for this shit to go down at Vegas. Yeah, it's super nice at night most of the time, that's why. You don't think about it. Like, there's not a lot of places for a vantage point shooter. I can think downtown, unless somebody's in the parking garage that is right next to the Target Center, Target Field, and down the block from First Ave. You'd have to be on one of the upper floors there. And you'd be shooting people on the street or people waiting in line at first. Yeah. And you'd have to do it from a car, like a drive-by, and then hop right on 90 foot. God, it sounds like I'm I mean, if someone really something. wanted to, they have, like, we have outdoor concerts here a lot, like in the summer, fall. Like, there's a big one coming up, Zombie Pub Crawl, where they have, like, a bunch of different stages. But is it around tall buildings where somebody could just rent a room and pull this shit off is the question. Yeah, if, they, if someone really is. wanted to. If they wanted to, but... Just the, I mean, there's hotels that are booked because people that are going to that stay at the hotels, and that's part of the block. You know that they block that they, uh, you know, they shut out, shut down part of the street. Right, the but hotels are on there. What this guy did, being that high up and being that well trained with his weapons, yeah, and then all these people, it's almost out of a fucking movie. Well, yeah, you. I mean, if you, because I actually, I mean, I've the the like most powerful gun I guess I've shot is probably just an AR-15. Yeah, I mean, not as far as caliber, but just far as like the gun itself and it's not and one of my friends who had it it's not like super you know easy to aim i mean even if you have a laser scope it's just when you're that far away and that high up you know any millimeter of i mean movement and your shot's like way off but he was just shooting into a sea of people so it didn't didn't matter aim i'm the same with as far as guns i've shot would be a 12 gauge shot or an ar Obviously, there's a lot more kick in the 12 gauge. Oh yeah, but I mean the AR-15 is insanely easy to shoot because it just uses 22s and there's like no kick. But this dude had bipods and all kinds of shit. Yeah, he had like didn't they say he bought tripods for cameras and mount you know just modified them so he could use them for you know just for a gun. I'm nodding. It's fucked up. I don't. I've never been to a concert and and worried about that. Never gone yeah. and I've worried about being assaulted. Yeah. Or stampeded. Well, we've Maybe seen stabbed. We've seen we've seen the first two. I yeah. mean, we just the concert we just went to. We just saw a guy get punched in the face for no good reason. It seemed yeah for a stupid reason, just because he thought he got shoved or something. And I've seen a girl get trampled at a Lincoln Park show at the Quest many many years ago when they were first coming out. So like two thousand. Some dude almost got 
trampled at that concert we just went to as well. But then luckily people kind of, I mean, people usually are pretty good if someone's down, like about help, you know, helping the other person up at concerts. But I've never been somewhere and worried about an active shooter scenario. And it's not new to concerts now because they had that shooting at the Bataclan in France with the Eagles of Death Metal. And yeah. all those fucking people that died in it. The guy's just walking around, just popping people off. The same thing with, like, the Pulse nightclub. When he walked in there, people tried to run and hide in the bathroom, and there was no exit door, and he just walked in there, and he had, they were sitting ducks. I've never felt worried like that. Even standing yeah. in line outside of clubs as there's cars just whizzing down avenues outside of the Quest back in the day when you used to have to wait for the show. Or well, this First is... Ave sometimes when you have to wait for a show. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I've never felt like that either, even though, like, you know, I don't really like big crowds for that long. Cause it's just, especially at that, the caboose, because it's such a bad designed venue as far as for concerts. It's long, like a mobile home yeah, and narrow, except for the very end part where, uh, I saw a wrestling show a few weeks back and, and honestly, they have no business having a wrestling <laughs> show there because it's almost like a fire hazard. Yeah. People are packed so tight. But I don't think, I mean, I don't think most people, as far as. Being afraid to go to Vegas now, I don't think most people would be scared. I mean, if anything, that's going to be, you know, the security everywhere is going to be Amped much, up. much tighter. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of like, you know, the airports now, It's even though it sucks ass flying. Post like, 9-11, yeah. everything changed, and they started the TSA. Yep. And it's not just you go through a metal detector and pass your stuff over a roller bar through an x-ray machine anymore. I mean, you might get yeah. a finger up the ass if you're random enough. How you fellas doing? But I don't know. Well, the thing is, too, that's the weird part because it's like no matter how much concert security they have, patting people down, metal detectors, whatever. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's it's an outside concert. It's like he wasn't even part of the concert, and you know, I mean, it just that doesn't like the security. They if they increase it, doesn't make a difference really in those cases. It's speaking of secu- what I would like to know, if we're speaking about security here, if he had that many guns, how did nobody catch him? with what had to be a hockey bag full of guns. Unless he had I mean, one suitcase, and it was mostly handguns, and the rest of the rifles were all broken down. I think that he just made multiple trips. Because it's there's so many people going in and out of those casinos with tons of baggage. And, I mean, I think that he just probably did it one a day. Because I think that they said he was there for already for like four days or something like that. And uh, I'm sure he just took one bag a day and then just added it up. I mean, this was like a calculated thing. This, that's why it's weird. It's not yeah. just like some dude flipping out, you know, fucking driving his car through a group of people. Yeah, that's the new uh, modern terror tactic du jour. Yeah. You don't even need to build a bomb. You can, Your car is the weapon. But this dude also had cameras set up to monitor law enforcement. Yeah. That's fucking insane when you think about well, yeah, all it, the measures he took to ensure that he could pull this off. He rented two adjacent rooms. Yeah, and apparently that he, some of the information that come out said that they thought, like that he, it set it up like he thought he was going to be able to get away or he was yeah. trying to plan an escape. So, like he thought he was going to just go into the next room over and act like he's not the guy and then try to walk away and just leave play all the, the guns role. in there. And then get, I don't know, I guess just leave the freaking hotel as soon as he can, but that's, yeah, I don't know. That's some diehard shit right I'm there. I'm sure that if you were staying there, I, well, I've I looked online and people said that they were, they couldn't leave their room for hours because they had, like the cops had to go to every like they wouldn't let anybody leave because it's they didn't they know where the fuck they was the coming entire from. Place, yeah, yeah. But do you remember the scene in Die Hard where Hans Gruber goes looking for John McClane? Oh yeah, and, and plays one of his victim. guys, and then McClane sneaks up on. Him. He's like, "Oh God, yeah. oh God, you're one of them. Don't kill me. You're gonna kill me. Oh God." He's like, "No, no, no. I'm not gonna kill you. I'm here to help you." Joke's on you, John McClane. I'm going to snape the shit out of you. What's another frequent place you go to besides Vegas? I usually go to Montreal every other year for sales meeting. What's the atmosphere around where you usually stay in Montreal? i got to believe you frequent the same places if you find one you like. Uh, No, they usually... Well, they always... They used to stay... We used to stay downtown in Montreal because... Everybody wanted to stay downtown because it's a nice city. It's a very European, old city. But then they one time they actually stayed us closer to the company, and everybody complained. So they just they bring us 
back downtown and they usually give us like a group rate. Very old, the old uh, Montreal, they call it. Yeah. I mean, you can go out and walk pretty safe there. So comparing the two cities, security wise, it sounds like obviously in Vegas, there's so much activity, so many people going that it was kind of lax. Yeah. Nobody expects this shit to happen. Well, yeah, especially when you walk the strip. I mean, if you, you'll see a cop, if you're walking at least for a little bit, you'll, I mean, you'll see the cops, especially on a Friday or Saturday night. I mean, you'll see the cops all over Vegas. They're always there. But it's like that, that's the thing is they didn't know where the hell the shots were coming from for a long time. I mean, by the time it reaches the cops, I mean, it's like the dam so much damage has already been done. Then they have to figure out where the hell he is. I think as completely caught off guard as law enforcement and the nation was at where this happened and how calculated it was, is similar to how completely awestruck we were after 9-11. Like, you don't think that there's someone's going to just start shooting out of a hotel down at the street. It's not an impossible thing to happen. But as I said earlier, it seems like some very Hollywood shit. And this would be the type of movie where all of a sudden... It's like Taken 7 and Liam Neeson stops the guy right before he starts shooting and killing everyone. Yeah. But 9-11, you know, they planned it forever and it happened. We were just, oh my God, holy shit, this could happen. Same deal. How many concerts have gone on in that exact same area around all those same hotels? How many millions of people have stayed there and been up and down those streets? And nothing like this has happened there before. And unfortunately, it's going to drastically alter the ease of doing many things in Vegas and, and similar similar venues and areas in major cities throughout the U.S. I don't know if Europe's going to jump to have the same kind of security tightening because they don't have the gun problem we do. Yeah, I mean, Vegas is weird too. Well, I don't know if the city it's different as a po- or the county maybe as opposed to the state because I know that they have weird gun laws in Las Vegas because you see all of these ads and, I, and it might be actually outside of the city but you can go and fire like really, really crazy powerful guns in the desert. I mean, you can go and fire, uh, do like, you know, M60 type shit. You can go fire it off in the desert for just this for all- fun. There's companies, yeah, that do it, okay. or well, in their shooting range. Like sometimes some of them will let you do it in the shooting range. It's controlled. Yeah, yeah. There was uh, the shooting range I had to go to for cop school in Burnsville. They had a 50 cal, ah, and you could shoot that bitch. Was it in a? You mean in a rifle or what was it in? It was, it was, was like, it? low to the ground. I think it was seated. Ah. And you paid, like, I think 5 or $10 per shell. Yeah. Maybe there's a different... If they're doing it in controlled setting or something with the instructor, you know, it might be a different thing. So that being said, I already have reservations about going to shows because the shit has happened elsewhere. And I don't like crowds for the reason of it's so unpredictable when you're around like several hundred to possibly thousands of people. Yeah. I couldn't imagine going to like a Taylor Swift show and there's tens of thousands of people oh. there and shit could pop off at any moment. I mean, Jesus Christ, what country was that with the Ariana Grande? Yeah, I think that was the UK. Concert and UK, there was a bombing. It? And the guy basically was walking out with all the crowd and then detonated this this explosive and injured yeah. people leaving and it was just a fucking melee and there was smoke half in the theater because it was by the entrances. It's fucking scary that you can't just go enjoy a night of entertainment. Yeah. I don't think it's ever going to, hopefully, knock on wood, ever be like that uh, Van Damme movie, Sudden Death, where there's the bomb up in the scoreboard of the Stanley oh. Cup finals. You remember no. that one? Yeah. And he's got to stop the bomb before it goes off and kills all these people inside the arena. Yeah, I would hope that it would never be like you're sitting upper deck at a Timberwolves game and suddenly somebody just starts blowing up a bomb vest. Because the target center, they wand you, they pat search you quick, you walk through two sets of metal detectors. It's scary food for the... The worst people that have to deal with this right now is law enforcement because now there's going to be this knee-jerk reaction to go through all this crazy extra training for everybody. Yeah. Especially around Vegas. I guarantee most of the Metro now is going to get borderline SWAT training for all of them. I'm sure they do CIT and active shooter scenarios, but this is a totally different fucking outcome. Well, I wonder how the security is going to be at, well, I don't know how it is already over at U.S. Bank Stadium, but I'm sure because, you know, for the Super Bowl, it's going to be insanely tight security. 
and that's a good place to take this is because they said now that this happened at a large venue with mm-hmm. a large crowd and hotels and shit all around, it's going to force them to up their game security wise for the Super Bowl. And for anybody that hears this outside of the Minneapolis area or outside of Minnesota's borders, they just recently fired the security company for the Viking Stadium and then replaced them in a matter of three days before a game on a Sunday. So they're going to have mm. security that's in place for less than a year learning the ropes. And it might be a company that knows their shit. Yeah. But the Super Bowl is way fucking crazier than even a Monday night game. Oh, yeah. They're going to be shutting down streets. They're going to be checking all kinds of hotels. I mean, you got agencies that bring in extra escorts and mm-hmm. drug dealers and all kinds of shit comes into town to help people, you know, quote, have a good time. I wouldn't want to be on the uh, Metro Sports Facilities Committee at all. Yeah. Because right now you're going, fuck. We just locked up heaven Justin Timberlake for the Super Bowl like a day and a half before this shit went down. And now we got to worry about totally changing our game plan because what if something like that and your Super Bowl halftime headliner gets spooked and says, oh, I'm backing out. Uh, You guys are are iffy on your security and you just change companies and you don't know if you're going to be all set to go. I mean, you claim that it's going to be safe, but who knows? It's an uncomfortable yeah. feeling. I The kids haven't asked. I don't know if they talked about it at school. They send home, like, emails and shit about stuff when bad things go down. Like, well, you know, we'll have counselors on hand and this is how yeah. you can explain it to your kids. Like, how do you tell... My kids are seven and under. How do you tell them all? Well, there's a bad man with a lot of guns that wanted to kill people for fun, basically. And he killed a lot of people and he hurt, you know, like 10 times as many. Just out of spite for fun. Yeah, and I don't, I, mean, I just, I hope they don't, they don't go after video games again like they always do in the past. Well, this guy's an old, well, that's, that's the, the funny thing. He's a millionaire and he's an old white guy and he doesn't fit any profile. So like, I, I don't know what to do. How do I spin this on the news? Yeah. He's not black and he's not Muslim and he doesn't hate gays. Fuck. Well, he's that, a white uh, guy shooting predominantly white fan bases. Well, they're going to find a way to, I mean, they're going to get a scapegoat either way or which, you know, in the past it's been video games, movies, books throughout human history and it's Marilyn like, Manson yeah but it I don't know I think that everybody just instantly talks politics with gun control about it and it's just like chill the hell out guys well the day after it happened like that Monday morning I forget what company there was a female CEO of a company and she made some comment basically that she had no sympathy for oh, the victims I know who you're talking about no she said something about White men killing white men is not news or something like that, didn't she? And she, well, she was a CEO of like, uh, I can't remember what company, but yeah, she got fired. She got well. The other thing she said was, is that I don't feel any sympathy yeah. for the victims. Oh, because, because country music fans are typically yeah. Republicans yep. anyway. I know who you're talking about now. Yep, fired. Yep, as she should be. I mean, really, like that's what's the thing about social media nowadays. It's like all these people have to make these dumbass comments, and it's like you should be accountable for what you post on there. So you're going to post some stupid shit like that. I mean, guess what? You're going to be accountable. That's especially stupid. I mean, that's insensitive in a whole different idiotic sort of way. And you talk about politicizing things that happen, like especially acts of terrorism. And that's what this was. He might have been a lone wolf shooter as far as we know. It's domestic terrorism. Yeah. ISIS might have tried to claim this guy. Oh, guy, it could have been a gas leak and just an explosion. And they would have claimed it. Yeah, they'll fucking say anything. They're going to claim it as fast as they possibly can as soon as they hear about it. And they're kind of like, well, if afterwards, if it's not related, it's not related. They already said there's no fucking way that it's yeah. ISIS. The guy had nothing in his internet history. All the stuff that they had access to didn't show him to be a uh, an extremist. Yeah, Muslim and he had convert. money. It's not like he was going to be getting paid by them or anything either. So he already had money. Well, it's funny because, you know, they always say that why rich people do dumb shit and get into troubles because they're bored. Yeah. They don't have jobs to go to. They don't really have to worry. They're just rich. And in their downtime, they just fuck off. They party all the time because they have the funds for it. And I imagine this guy's life was 
I don't know. Comfortable. I won't say lavish because I don't know him, but if you have millions, you're yeah. comfortable. You're comfortable and you have money just fuck around. And I couldn't imagine having that much money to essentially solve all my problems yeah. or keep me from having to worry about the majority of things that most people constantly fret about, mostly money. And then you have that much hate to just start shooting random people. It's yeah, not like he went to, you think of that church shooting in like South Carolina or mm-hmm. I, it was one of the Carolinas and the kid walked in there and he shot the black people for being black at a black church. He was racist. Yeah. It was race motivated. And then you get the Muslims that are blowing people up because it's faith based because they're declaring jihad on non-believers in Islam. But this guy, a white guy shooting white people. I yeah. don't even have a structure for this episode. We're just rambling. I, it's fucking hard to process that. It's just like after 9-11, we're like, what the fuck now? Yeah. I don't know. I just, we're still looking at going back to Vegas. I'm not really scared about going back there at all. It's just kind of like, it sucks for all the people involved. How'd the wife and, feel? I mean, kind of the same way. Like, still wants to go back in like February, March. Like, you know, we go every spring and every fall. Yeah. So, what if anything did your parents say? No, they just well they knew I got back then. So, but have either your mom or dad said anything about Vegas? Not really. Like, oh my god, I'm worried for you to go back there. No, neither. No, no, they haven't ever said anything like that. But I know so, I'm not the only person that was blowing your phone up to see if you guys yeah. were home and okay because you had enough contacts that you felt the need to put something on Facebook. Yeah. Like, hey, everybody, thanks for checking in. And we I, are home and safe. And I rarely post on Facebook just because I man, my phone is blowing up. And everybody knew I was getting back like around then. So, Estimate how many people contacted you. I mean, probably like 10. What about her, the wife? Um, A couple. Like, she doesn't have Facebook at all, so. Okay. But a few of them. But, like, well, some of them, are, you know, mutual contacts contacted me because I actually respond <laughs> yeah, on my phone. They know that she doesn't respond anytime, you know, to text or to, doesn't answer her phone like I do, I guess, so. Well, I was fairly confident that you were home, but it's still, ah. in the back of your mind, you still have that panic. So, it had to be absolutely horrible for anybody that had family in Vegas. Yeah. And- that they didn't. They they knew they weren't going to be home before that. Like, if you're sitting at home, you're like, oh, fuck. I have family there. And there's people throughout this whole country that had family there, and they got the bad news. Yeah. Interact with the show on Twitter at what do we call it. That is at what do we call it. You can find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash group slash what do we call it podcast show. For the what do we call it podcast, I'm J-Man. And Neil... And that's the end.